I'll be honest, you know, even for myself being in this industry, I was always a body activist and I've been a body activist since I was 14 years old, sort of something just fell on my lap. And then I recognized, wow, okay, I have a duty to use my voice for good and speak up for people who can't, but I've always struggled with anxiety and depression and it never felt comfortable, if you may say, for me to speak openly about it in the public view, because I did have those concerns that then I was not going to be able to book the right jobs. I was going to be looked as less of and not ready or professional enough to be able to take on that role. Right. But that's why it's been such an amazing, freeing, beautiful thing that's happened over the past year, because now we're all coming out of the woodwork saying, hey, wait, I've struggled. I've struggled. I've struggled. And It makes you so much more relatable and it just allows you to connect with so many different people. And I've heard so many stories from my friends in the industry and even friends of my end that are in the industry that are photographers that have reached out to me being like, you know, that time we were on a shoot and I didn't come to lunch. Well, I feel like I really want to tell you now I was having a panic attack and I didn't know who to run to. And I looked at him, I said, I wish you would have just told me. I wish you would have just come to me and we would have been able to figure it out together and get through that day together. And it's this beautiful thing that when you start to show your vulnerability to one person, they feel that they can be vulnerable with you, whether that be personally or professionally. But I'm speaking on the professional, professionally standpoint, because I do know that that's been a concern for many people. And that's where this podcast started. It was a lot of my friends who've been in the industry for more than 10 years, who never felt like they could speak openly about having an anxiety attack before a press conference, but then finally felt like, let's talk about it. Let's show that I got through that day and what was in my toolbox to get me through that day. Um, I love that you said, you know, that, that I think there's a lot of misunderstanding when it comes to mental illness. There is a, this perception of what people may think mental illness is. There's also a perception of what people think happens to somebody once they get treatment. And we want to break that stigma, right? We want to be able to showcase that, yes, somebody can deal with anxiety, but that can feel and look different for each and every person. I know that you personally struggle with anxiety, depression, just as I do. Can you speak to the audience a little bit more about what your journey has been like and what that feels like for you? Yeah, definitely. And I'm happy to do so because it's part of breaking the stigma. Now, I mean, think about it. I'm a psychiatrist. I treat mental illness, right? Yeah. So, so many people would probably be like, you know, I can't, I can't have a problem because I'm the one that's supposed to give everyone the answer to that problem. So right off the bat, it was very, very challenging for me to sort of come out with the fact that I've struggled with mental illness pretty much my entire life. And I can start by saying that as a child, I had multiple different anxiety disorders that manifested in different ways. And, and as a child, I, I struggled with obsessive compulsive disorder and panic disorder and separation anxiety. And it was torture because I didn't understand it. I didn't understand it. And, and I don't know, for, I love my family. I love my parents, but they were first generation European, very stoic, did not believe in mental illness. Like, if, what do you mean you're nervous? Just what do you mean? Like, right, you're depressed? Go, go outside and play, stop it, right? So I didn't have that support. So I felt very alone. And I just didn't know what was wrong with me. And I, and I, you know, just struggled through it. Now, thankfully, as a, as a young adult, I did get help and, yeah. and it helped me through my depression and anxiety and, and my, my anxiety sort of manifested into depression. I mean, you know, I can't diagnose myself. I can't, but I can theorize that, you know, all of that anxiousness and, and internalizing all of that and feeling different for the majority of my young adulthood sort of turned into like a depression, right? And that's mm. kind of my, my thought. But um, so then I became very depressed and I, and I certainly know what it's like to be incredibly depressed. And, you know, when I went to medical school and, and I was a doc and I was a family medicine doctor, I was treating, you know, coughs and colds and high blood pressure and diabetes and, and yeah. you know, <laughs> all that stuff. And what I noticed, Haley, was that people were coming into my office and when someone would say to me, hey, doc, yeah, I have a cough. I have a sore throat. Can you look at my throat? And I would look at it and give them an antibiotic. But if someone came into my office and said, I'm not getting out of bed. 
I'm not showering. I've lost my zest for life. I don't enjoy things anymore. It's like my ears would perk up <laughs> and I would listen and I would be like, oh my God, I understand this. This is cl potentially clinical depression. Let's get you some help. And that's when I knew right there that I had to go and study psychiatry and behavioral health. And, you know, for what it's worth, and I, you know, I don't know, but I think that my struggles with it helped me as a professional as well to, to understand it a little bit more because I've sort of been through it. Definitely. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that, that's my journey, you know, and it's a lifelong journey. You know, we all have bad days and good days and, and uh, you know, now I know the clinical stuff about it all, like the biopsychosocial stuff, which we can talk about and the genetics of it and the neurotransmission and the medications and the therapies. <laughs> But, you know, just because you know that doesn't mean you can fix yourself, right? So you still need help. There's one thing that I've always said, and I said this to you yesterday when we had a little talk, is that I truthfully have always believed the universe put me on this planet to mm -hmm. speak my pain through story. And that I've gone through all of this for a reason, for a purpose. And to be able to relate to another person by saying, it wouldn't feel authentic for me to speak about mental health if I didn't experience it myself. Now, you know, one of the things we spoke about earlier is tending to your emotional triggers. As I get older and more educated around mental health and mental well-being, the word trigger starts to kind of get circled around. It's something that probably wasn't in my vocabulary a couple of years back, but now it's something that I use quite frequently of understanding my anxiety, understanding my depression, being able to identify when a trigger is coming or a flare up, and then helping myself tend to it, right? I really want you to talk a little bit more about triggers. If you can break that down for somebody who may not understand that word completely just yet, and also how they really help when a flare up is coming in our own mental journey. So, you know, when people have various mental illness, let's just say, let's just say it's trauma, right? Like a history mm -hmm. of trauma and, or maybe bullying or maybe, maybe there's a personality disorder with a fear of abandonment, right? I mean, we could basically fill in the blanks and with whatever sort of mental struggle people are going through. Mm -hmm. Most people, unfortunately, that suffer from these internal struggles, they don't really understand it, but they feel it, right? Yeah. They, they feel just horrible. They feel nervous. They feel uncomfortable. They feel irritable. They feel mm -hmm. angry. They feel explosive but they don't really understand more than the emotion of it, more than the presentation of it, which can be horrible because that ruins relationships. You get into arguments, you lock yourself in your room, whatever, you hurt yourself, God forbid. So depending on what your struggle is, identifying triggers or sort of understanding when you're going down that path is, is so incredibly important because the word of the day for that is, insight. Yeah. If you have insight into understanding and to catch those triggers, what you're going to do is basically take that snowball that's on the top of a mountain that's starting to turn into an avalanche and you're stopping it. Yeah. Because, because mental health and <laughs> mental illness and our behavior health develops momentum. And you know, that's on the good side too. You know, we can develop positive momentum as well but there's a negative emotional momentum. So think of that avalanche that's just starting, like there's little snowballs kind of starting to trickle. And if you can identify that in yourself with education and therapy and say, okay, all right. And you've spoken with your therapist on your, your personal coping strategies because everyone's different, right? So maybe so let's just say it's panic disorder, right? And I'm about to go on stage on a TV show, which I do often. And I, I start to feel the tinglys, right? And the butterflies and I start to yep. feel dizzy. I go, okay, I've, I know that this is a panic attack. I know that my heart rate is increasing because my body's going into fight or flight. I'm going to take four or five deep breaths. I'm going to let it pass. And then I've sort of stopped that cascade of events, right? Mm -hmm. So I've ad I identified kind of the triggers and the emotions and the feelings and the physical feelings and I've stopped those things in their tracks. And, and the more we can realize and recognize those things um, in each individual case, sort of the better off our trajectory is going to be, right? And the safer we feel and the safer we can be and, and you know, build ourselves to be better.